guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to do a quick vid on uh, working your way around obstacles when you're pen testing. Uh, now this will apply to some things we've talked about before in the past about regular network security pen testing, but continuing on in our WebSec series, uh, you know, for the web security stuff uh, and pen testing web applications. Um, you know, there's times where you'll come across a stumbling block in the road, say, you know, you've run scans on, you know, a website or a web application, you couldn't find any type of attacks, no SQL injections, no cross-site scripting, um, no type of brute forcing, um, nothing. I mean, literally you have zero. But there's often a way around certain things. So, I want to talk about a tool today called Hydra, and um, and this also touches on information gathering as well. So what I've done is I've set up a dummy email and a dummy free WordPress site on WordPress.com, um, and now you can also try this out yourself, of course, if you want to do that. Um, so basically, how most CMS sites work, uh, or any kind of content management system, WordPress, you know, um, any kind of blog software or uh, bulletin boards, message boards, you know, forums, things like that, is generally, you know, anything with a login system, um, you know, is vulnerable to a password reset security flaw, which is what I like to call it. Now, it's not your traditional security flaw, whereas, like, you know, you exploit this certain thing, and then, bingo, you're in. Um, this takes a little bit of crafty uh, brute force cracking, and that's how we're going to touch on Hydra. So again, like I said, I set up a dummy email address at Gmail. I also went ahead and set up this uh, dummy website over here at the free WordPress uh, website. So let's say that this is our customer's, um, you know, company website. And, uh, you know, we're trying to do like a password audit on them. So instead of just hammering with everything we got, um, you know, we're trying to find a crafty way in. So we couldn't crack their website. We couldn't find any SQL injections or, you know, cross-site scripting attacks zero. They're using WordPress, it's the most current version, everything's up to date, all their plugins are up to date, uh, which is something that I do regularly every day, um, is make sure everything's up to date. Uh, so we couldn't really find any way in. But the point is that when administrators sometimes forget their passwords, which they do, it happens, uh, most of these content management systems, like I said, have a password reset link. Now the important part you need to know about that is either their username or their email in most cases. Well, we couldn't do a SQL injection attack on this website here, uh, so therefore we couldn't get a username. So we have to start looking around the website and do a little bit of, uh, you know, Intel recon. Um, and so if we look on the website here, it says, you know, on the about page, hey, if you want to contact me, please email, crack this email, 101 at gmail.com. Now, we're not 100% sure that this is the actual email they're using for this WordPress site, but it gives us a starting point to at least try something. So we want to go ahead and copy that. Um, you know, I should probably log out of the site first because that would kind of make it a little bit better to show you how it works. Let me just go ahead and... Okay. So you can see here, uh, not logged in or anything uh, fancy, and we found their um, you know, email address. So we go ahead and fire up our Kali Linux box here, and there's something called Hydra. Now Hydra has a command line version, and they also have a GUI front end version. Uh, for ease of showing you guys how it works, I'm going to use uh, the GUI version. And while it's a little bit limited, it's almost the same uh, as a command line version for most aspects. So if you go into your Applications menu, your Kali uh, Linux submenu, and into Password Attacks, and then the submenu of Online Attacks, you can see in here there's a bunch of different stuff. But like I said, we're going to focus on Hydra. So now when you open this up, there's a couple different fields to look at, a couple different tabs, and I'm going to explain it as I go. So your single target is um, if you are just you know trying to go against cracking the email account, which is hosted by Gmail. Uh, you could have a target list, so say for instance you were going against multiple targets, you could try that as well, and then you would have just a flat file, like a text file or something like that, uh, and then you would click on that, click in here, and open up the file from whatever location. We're just going to go after a single target here. So we know we want to go after Gmail, and if you did a quick Google search about, you know, uh, we're trying to break into email, so we know email works off of POP3 and SMTP. 
Now it used to be the de facto standard, and it still is kind of, uh, that the port that works for SMTP was port 25. Uh, however, we ran into an issue where some residential people uh, weren't, their ISPs weren't, allow, weren't allowing them to go out on port 25 because of spam and junk mail and all that good stuff that the spammers were doing. So we did our crafty Google search. We found out that the Gmail servers are as follows, and we type that in here. Now you can type in a domain name or an IP address, of course. It's smtp.gmail.com. So uh, you can also do to prefer IP version 6. Not a lot of people have implemented that so far, so we're going to stick with IP version 4, which is default inside Hydra. The port. Now this is what I was talking about just before about port 25. If you do the crafty Google searching, you can find out that SMTP for public users, any users, all users, is port 465. So we go ahead and type that in there. Now important, we're going to go to choose our protocol. Since we're attacking a mail server, the protocols are SMTP or POP3, just your standard. I mean, of course, there's IMAP and there's all that good stuff, but we're just focused on SMTP for the time being. So if you scroll down this list here, you'll see there's a ton of different protocols. There's stuff for Asterix phone system, Cisco, um, uh, FTP, FTP Secure, or with SSL. Uh, there's HTTP stuff. I mean, there's LDAP, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL. You know, there's a bunch of different stuff. So we want to focus on SMTP, which we go down and uh, pick out of that list here. Now, of course, every time I have an option to be verbose, uh, I will always choose that because I want to see as much information as possible. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and use SSL uh, because most services that you're logging into these days over a public infrastructure is over SSL. I also want to show attempts because I want to know what's failed, what's not. And we could choose debug, but I don't really feel like we need that. So the next tab we go over here to is passwords. Now. The username field, we already know um, that our username is going to be this email address, which is crackthisemail101 at gmail.com. Now, again, if you had a user list and you were just trying to attack multiple Gmail accounts, or for instance, um, you were doing work for a client and you wanted to attack all of their mail addresses on their server or on their network, of course, you would use that if you were doing like a password audit. So you'd pop all their names into a flat file again, like a text file, and you'd pop that into username list. But we're just after one user here. And you can also loop around users. And the good thing about the Hydra GTK, the front end of it, the uh, GUI version of it, is you can kind of hover over these things without typing, you know, up the man pages for the commands in, um, in the command line, uh, or in a terminal, I should say. Um, and it'll you know give you helpful t uh, hints about what it's about. I apologize, guys. I'm I'm extremely tired. It's about two o'clock in the morning right now, so I just wanted to crank this video out quickly and uh, go to bed. <laughs> so um, anyway, password again. You can do single passwords here, which is not going to be the case because we're trying to brute force it. We don't really know the password. We don't even have a working idea of what the password could possibly be. So we went ahead here and just chose password list, and we scrolled down to and I just created a very simple text file with a few common passwords in it and one of those passwords happens to be uh, for the email just to show you how this works. So go ahead and click open and you could probably use a CSV file it looks like uh, as well here um, and also uh, you can try the login as a password or try an empty password um, you know maybe try the login as a password that might work if it was a simple username um, empty passwords I mean come on really who uses empty passwords these days so the next tab we want to go look at here is tuning on the very top number of tasks is actually the threads the number of amount of attempts that it's going to make uh, within the session at once at any one given time um, generally speaking about threads guys and this applies to most other things that use uses threading or multi-threading uh, you want to try to keep it low a lot of you know servers like for instance gmail will lock you out after a certain period of, of tries from the same IP address or uh, if you're hammering it to death all at once with say 35 threads they may limit it to you know 10 connections per X amount of seconds per IP address which is something that I tend to do in some of my firewall applications as well so 
I'm going to make this reasonable here and make it about 10. Now, of course, you can always hover over it and it'll give you the tooltip. Uh, timeout is the timeout between failed and uh, successful attempts. I like to leave this, you know, 30 seconds or so, just so it doesn't look like we're hammering to death all at once. Uh, also, you can use a proxy in here um, or no proxy. Uh, you can use an HTTP proxy or a regular connect method. So you could probably use Tor in here. I haven't tried it, so I can't say 110% for sure, but it sure does look like it is possible. Now, of course, if your proxy needs authentication, if you were using like a VPN or something, uh, perhaps you could put your username and password in here for that. We're not worried about that, of course. So we can go into specific here, and I've really never touched any of this stuff, guys. I mean, you can if you're doing like SMB audits or something like that. Um, for our purposes here we're not going to even go ahead and touch that so we go over to the star tab here you can see our output screen uh, is clear and when the data starts rolling when we hit start you're going to see a bunch of stuff scroll across the screen here let's go ahead and click start and you can see we kind of had a little bit of an error a little bit of a, a problem here so uh, let me go back here I'll, I can see what the problem is here I accidentally change the password before. I tried to make this video before but apparently my microphone wasn't working so again it's late I do apologize uh, let me go over here and just change this back and I believe it's that I'll go ahead and save it okay so we'll go back into Hydra here I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this output here and there we go so of course once the password's actually cracked, uh, you'll see it here in bold, and it'll tell you the login, username, and the password that it cracked. And of course, you can look here at the very uh, small word list that we inputted, and you can see all the attempts that it made across all of the different uh, types of passwords that were in there. So now, of course, um, we know that our email address is here and our password is lol cats 101 now that's for the email so let's go ahead and go back over to this website here and this unfortunately because it's the free version of you know wordpress it's not like traditional where it says you know login or whatever um, so we want to go ahead and go right back to the wordpress site here to get a login prompt and now of course you can see where you would log in here now again this is different from site to site so keep that in mind you got to find where the admin's supposed to log in so I'm just going to go ahead here and hit sign in. And now this looks like the regular WordPress login screen like it's supposed to look. Okay, so um, you can see down here there's a lost your password reset link. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And of course, like I said, it's asking us for a username or email address. Of course, we couldn't do any kind of attack, so we don't have a username, but we do have their email. We grabbed off their About Us page or their Contact Us page or what have you. Now, again, we're not sure if this is the actual email address we're using, so we're still kind of in the dark here. Sure, we got access to their email just now. We just cracked the password. That's all well and good, but we don't know if that's what they're using for the administration or the login of this particular CMS or this website. So let me go ahead and uh, paste in or type in the email here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and click get new password. First, I want to log into the email account and make sure that I have access there before I'm making any kind of noise on their network or uh, in any of their situations there so nobody really knows what's going on. So I want to go ahead and go to gmail.com and I want to go ahead and sign in. Now remember Hydra just gave us the username and password so it's going to be crack this email 101 at gmail.com and if we remember correctly when we go back to Hydra here our password was lolcats and I always like to copy the password and the username uh, just so I don't make any clerical typographical mistakes go ahead and paste that in there and sign in and it looks like because I just set up this account it's new so I'm just going to skip past this here and you can see we're in the email account, so great. We know we can send this uh, reset link here and hope for the best that that's actually the email address they're using. Go ahead and click Get New Password, and it says here, check your email address link to the account for the confirmation link, including the spam or junk folder. Now keep that in mind. Sometimes some mail providers, this kind of stuff will go into the spam or junk folder. 
And you can see here we got a brand new email password reset uh, from their website, which is soon to be our website. And go ahead and click on the reset password link. Now, of course, it's going to open up another tab, or in this case, because it's junky Internet Explorer, another window. And now we can go ahead and type in a new password. Well, their other password was LOLCAT something or other, I think. I, I don't remember what I set it to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new password for ourselves. Now, the worst case that's going to happen here is the admin tries to log in, say, later, tomorrow, or whatever. Um, and he says, shoot, my password is not right. And even if his password was saved, he might say, Ah, maybe something happened. I'm going to go ahead and hit that password reset link. Now we didn't change the password to the email. That's the important part. So when he does a password reset, he's going to log into his email. He's going to reset his password back to what it was or something else. And he's probably not going to pay no mind to it. Um, so let's go ahead and just create LOL cats 101 and go ahead and click reset password. Okay, so it says the password has been reset go ahead and log in. So now of course we type our email in here. Now guys this will also uh, apply to Yahoo servers, you know, independent mail servers, things like that. So we think we made this LOLCATS101. Let's go ahead and log in. And wouldn't you know we're in their website now. So if we went ahead and went over to pages we can see here that there's only one page obviously because we just created this as a dummy test site and we'll go ahead and click about and you can see this is where they had their email put in their their about page there and so I'm just gonna go ahead and put in defaced by afterburn and that's it I'm gonna go ahead and update it And I'm going to go ahead and view the page once it's done here. There we go. Okay. So you can go ahead and see that we changed it to face by afterburn. So now, of course, if this is, you know, your customer, you're not going to deface their web page. You might leave your logo in the corner of, you know, one of their unimportant websites uh, just to be able to show proof that you were there, you did it, this is how I did it. Uh, you know, you're using a weak password on your email. I cracked your email address or I sent the reset admin password link to that email. Bingo, you use that email for it. You should be using two separate emails, which is a good practice to use. Um, one email that you do not publish to anybody as your uh, admin email for your CMSs, something that I do. Um, that avoids this whole sticky situation. Uh, nonetheless, basically we went over this this video is there's, where there's a will, there's a way, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, we couldn't do any kind of attacks on the website. The website was completely clean, no security flaws, beautiful, couldn't be better. Uh, but we went ahead and found a little bit of information gathering, found their email address, crossed our fingers, hoped and prayed for it to be the admin email address. And of course, uh, we went ahead and cracked that email address, gained access to it, did not change anything about the email. And then of course, we went back to the website, hoped and prayed again, put that email in for the password reset link. And sure enough, our prayers came through and it came right into our inbox. We went ahead and changed their password to something else, logged into their website and put our little mark on it. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the quick vid. Uh, again, just to reiterate, um, it's rather hard for me to try to keep up with answering questions on YouTube, even though I'm getting now familiar with the whole uh, Google Plus integration and stuff. Um, and then questions on Facebooks and questions on Twitter and questions on the website, it really becomes cumbersome for one guy to do. So what I'm asking everybody is to, you know, project your questions over to the website because the reason for the website is we created a community as well as, you know, news and updates from us, of course. But the community is great because there's a lot of people involved and there's a lot of people registered. And um, it, I feel it's kind of unfair to the other users uh, if, you know, you're asking me questions in private and I'm answering them and it may benefit somebody else down the line. So I may get asked that question, you know, a day later, a week later, a year later, and then I got to go back and answer it again. So 
Uh, I'm hoping that all of you will go ahead and go over to the website learnnetsec.com, uh, go to the community section and post your questions and you know check it out. Uh, because not only that, if I'm not around for whatever reason, there may be another user online that can answer your question more quickly. Uh, so everybody, it's all about learning and sharing and uh, all that good stuff. So check out that. Um, you can definitely still check us out on Facebook. The links are below in the description. And uh, again, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.